folks, today we're celebrating the most collectible guitar in the world, the 1959 Gibson Les Paul. And for this occasion, we've got two absolutely stunning examples fresh from the Gibson Custom Shop in Nashville, Tennessee. First up, we've got this stunning factory burst model in VOS spec. The finish is slightly matte and it's got a very, very slight patina to it, which is incredibly cool, but it's otherwise in perfect nick. It's basically replicating the feel of a guitar that was packed away 60 years ago and you've opened the case and gone, Oof, nice. We've also got this gorgeous example from the Murphy Lab in ultralight aging spec. Uh, this finish is called Golden Poppy and it replicates what happens to the finish when it was exposed to a bunch of different conditions, uh, namely UV light, um, sometimes smoky bars, uh, and also just what happens to nitrocellulose and aniline dyes over the years. <laughs> The details on these guitars are so, so beautiful. These AAA figured maple tops were hand selected by the Manny's team leader who chose them for their likeness to well-known Gibson Les Pauls. From there, they were of course cut and assembled by the masters at the Gibson Custom Shop in Nashville, Tennessee. Each component of the original 1959 Les Pauls is painstakingly reproduced to capture the essence of what made the original guitars so special. Vintage style Cluson single ring tuners, replica laminated cellulose acetate butyrate pickguard, the original cellulose nitrate trapezoid inlays, hand wired electronics with paper and oil capacitors, the whole shebang. Originally, all the Les Pauls came out with the same cherry burst finish, um, but over the years, a lot of different conditions kind of hit these guitars and you got a really wide variation in the color spec. And that's what they've done here at the Murphy Lab is, is go, yep, We've seen ones that have totally faded, and this is now what it looks like. The Murphy Lab is Gibson's in-house aging department. They replicate accurately what happens to these guitars over the years. So basically what you're gonna get is some beautiful nitrocellulose uh, lacquer checking, which uh, is what happens when the nitro expands and contracts over the years. You get a more patina on the hardware, uh, and basically little bits of kind of knocks and dings that replicate the really common kind of injuries that these guitars will suffer over the years. One of the defining characteristics of the 59 Les Paul is absolutely the neck profile. In 1958, the Gibson Les Paul standard came out with what was affectionately known as the baseball bat profile, which had a fairly even taper from the nut all the way down to the neck heel, which results in a really hefty rounded um, feeling in the hand. In 1959, Gibson decided to give the players a little bit more in the way of comfort, and they started slimming out the profile, especially noticeable between the first fret and the seventh fret. As you get up towards the business end, it's still got a fair bit of heft to it, but it's considerably more comfortable to the majority of players. 1959 was also the last year of the drastic finish variations that you see in the Les Paul standards. In early 1960, in response to reports that the finishes were not holding up uh, as well, Gibson decided to change the formulation of the dies and you got a lot of really strikingly red Les Paul finishes, which was affectionately or otherwise known as the tomato soup burst. These have divided people over the years as to how cool they are or not. But the upshot of that is that 1959 is kind of considered the 
gold standard for really striking finishes, slim neck profile, and jumbo frets, which joined the party in early 59. its release, the 59 Les Paul was considered a commercial failure. Originally designed to be a jazz guitar, they came from the factory with flat wound strings and were considered to be fairly old fashioned by the time they were released. This all changed in the mid 60s when a new generation of guitarists rediscovered these hidden gems and brought them to the forefront of popular music. Names like Billy Gibbons, Eric Clapton, Dwayne Allman, and of course, that Led Zeppelin dude, Jimmy Page. <laughs> One of the most exciting things about these 59 reissues is the pickups that Gibson have put in them. The original 1959 Les Pauls came out with the legendary patent applied for humbuckers, which basically set the tone for the modern pickup. In 57, they were wound with Alnico 2 magnets. Uh, in 1958, they switched to Alnico 5, which gave it a much brighter and chimier kind of sound. Gibson have done something really interesting though. With these custom buckers, they've actually used Alnico 3 magnets. What's really cool about that is it kind of has a way of capturing the sound of a vintage PAF um, rather than sounding super brand new and off the shelf. And to my ears, I've been quite lucky over the years to play quite a few vintage guitars with PAFs in them. And these do a really, really good job of giving you the kind of tonal taste and variation that everyone loves. So that was just the neck pickup. Basically what I did was I started with the volume control on around two um, and the tone on 10. That allows all of the top end uh, and clarity to kind of shine through uh, without pushing the amp hard enough to let it break up. I started to dial in a little bit more volume and the tone gets a little bit hairier. Backing it off a little bit with the tone control tames a few of those high ends and gets that really nice rounded sound. Uh, and then with everything on 10, you get a really driving grunty tone.
so that was both pickups running together. Um, I alternated between rolling the tone off on the neck pickup uh, while leaving it on full on the bridge and then vice versa. That gives you one of the most classic Les Paul sounds, um, the tone that's kind of similar to a cocked wah. It's a tone that's both cutting and round at the same time. It almost seems counterintuitive, but you get this really nice roll off of the high end while still getting that kind of grunt and roar as you dig in. As you can hear, the bridge pickup definitely has the edge when it comes to cut and clarity. As I dialed in the volume control, you can really hear that characteristic Les Paul bite. But at the same time, you dial it back a little bit and you get that clean, spanky country twang, which is very, very cool. <laughs> The level of detail that Gibson have gone into to replicate a vintage guitar is incredible. And it's one of those things that you pick it up and it feels, feels old. That's not something that you get to experience regularly. I don't have enough good things to say about what's coming out of the Gibson Custom Shop. Uh, and with vintage examples regularly nudging the half million dollar mark, it is really hard to look at this as anything but incredible value for money and a really, really satisfying playing experience. Well, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for tuning in for our spotlight on the 59 Les Paul Standard. My name's Tom, I'll catch you next time.